Hi, GameSpot viewers. This is Kevin Van Ord here, and I'm on Skype with uh, some folks from Blue Giant Interactive. Uh, I'm talking with uh, Vinny, Alok, and Tejas over there. How are you guys doing? We're doing Great. good. Really good. Great. And we are going to talk about your upcoming RTS called Trist. Yep. Yes. That's right. And uh, let's let's start by giving me a rundown of what Trist is. I know it's a real-time strategy game, but fill us in on some of the details that we need to know. Well, um, Trist is uh, kind of like a, well, yes, like you said, it's an RTS. We've uh, kind of focused a bit or very heavily on our choices in this one. Uh, we've moved off of, uh, from Apox and. Um, well, we're we're trying quite a few things out with this one. To be uh, to be honest, I don't even know where to begin. But uh, if you're watching the video right now, um, I guess we can start off with um, our resource system, which uh, we've changed uh, from our la uh, last game. It's a capture point based uh, system where uh, you have two points in your base. Yes, uh, but a lot of the gameplay will focus in and around the map. Uh, right now, you can actually see lava. Uh, underneath one of those points. Sure. That's another thing that we, you know, tr we're trying to mess around with is uh, have the environment uh, kind of change your gameplay or affect your units in different ways. So this is one of the negative ones, but you know, we have other places on the map that kind of, uh, you know, buff your units or provide major bonuses. Um, this map in particular, um, well, as the video progresses, we will see something in the center which uh, gives whichever team captures that point a major resource Anyone bonus. So what about that that uh, that lava that we saw? How does that actually affect the player at that stage? Well, anybody who stands on it takes damage. So if you're running in to capture those points, you got to be really quick about it. If you, you know, send them into capture and then just leave them there, they're gonna die a very slow, slow death. So we're seeing some units in action already. Um, tell us about how, you know, the, the building units and, and the early game, how the uh, flow goes when you're building up your base. Well, um, with, right now we're looking at the humans. So like, kind of like what I said earlier, we kind of want a lot of choice. So right off in the beginning, you can choose uh, between, uh, you know, going um, air units, vehicles, um, infantry. So. The, our building speeds are pretty fast, so you kind of get your units out within a few minutes. Uh, you have an army ready to go. Um, just to point out, that is the center point I was talking about, and that becomes a great focus early game. Um, with the uh, Zali race, uh, they're pretty fast too. They have a system of charges actually, where their main structure will per periodically uh, produce and store these charges, which you can then turn into basic units. Right. Now I saw so, that you were in uh, a menu there, it, and it looked like you were able to sort of change the the makeup of uh, a particular unit. Is there a unit customization here? Yes, there is. Uh, we've got quite a bit of that actually. Um, for the humans, we have like every unit has three tiers and of uh, abilities, and in each tier you have a uh, few choices choices to choose from. So you know um, what abilities or perks, whatever you want to call them, uh, you take, will change how the unit can function uh, in battle. So for the Merc, uh, you know, I've taken damage. Um, later on, I think in this game, uh, I'll be taking uh, healing for them, actually, where they can heal themselves on the fly so I don't have to rely on medics. Um, and for the Zali, they have a more traditional tech tree where you invest into um, kind of pathways uh, of different... Um, skill sets and those will take time if you notice for the humans when you research an ability it's pretty much instantaneous right. so talk about these two factions and what makes them different from each other we've got the human and the zali um, how do those how do how do the basic differences play out in a match um, well with the uh, with the humans they're very standard we didn't take uh, too many risks with you know the way they function they have to be something that's just accessible to people right so they function the way you would expect any standard RTS uh, race to work uh, you build buildings uh, there are certain support structures or certain dependencies uh, structure based dependencies for other units and you level up your main uh, headquarters you know along different tiers and unlock more structures more units 
with the Zali, uh, we come back to those pads that I talked about. Your main structure there not only produces your units, but you it allows you to create these uh, temples, and each temple corresponds to a certain play style. And you can only choose uh, three temples to make. So you can choose uh, to upgrade one, or build one temple and then upgrade it twice, or build one up, uh, temple, upgrade it once, and then build a second one, and then have a mix and match of abilities. And that's kind of how they function. Also, depending on what uh, temple you build or what tier of the temple it is, you can merge your basic units to create more powerful ones. Now, what, uh, you know, right now we're looking obviously at a multiplayer game, but I'm curious, what is the sort of backstory that brings these two races together um, on, on this particular map, or in the game in particular? So basically what we're going for is that uh, the resources on Earth have been uh, are scarce, so the humans have to colonize on different planets for resources. So this is one particular planet called Estonia, where the humans have, have found a special resource called Loham. And it seems that at that very moment where we have colonized, the, a new alien race has come in that's called the Zali. And so both of us are basically fighting over the same resource. Now I've played a, a little bit of uh, the the beta right now, but you are, you guys are right now in in closed beta, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And right now the the beta includes the two races as well as uh, several maps, but there's also going to be a campaign as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little about a little bit about the campaign and 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 sort of the setup for that. Uh, basically the campaign starts off as if there's a truce between both races and the Zali are slowly backstabbing us and we realize it too late. So it starts off from that moment onwards, right? how we get back into the game. I think the, the core in the single player actually is the, at the same time, each mission, I think the player is made to choice and these choices actually will flow into the next, yeah. I mean actually the next missions. And, and you could, that is where we are trying to see actually the best value for I mean, actually offer players who play, like to play only offline. Right. Especially now who look for actually a great story. So the, if they could come back and then make a different choices and that would entirely play out different. So the, and there is a great replay value in, in, um, in campaign actually, so it's an offer. At the same time, and the difficulty as well, we're trying to make it actually... Yeah, the, we're tweaking that. We're tweaking the down and then we try to make it difficulty in it. In a, not like a, it's something how it's actually for them in a multiplayer comparison actually. We don't make it actually too easy and you know, too scripted. And at the same time, when they go into the multiplayer, they're completely lost. So the campaign will teach them actually, it will introduce them all the different units that they will they will see them actually. Right. Um, they will encounter them in multiplayer and that will, pro that will actually progress that way. So well, now I see on screen now, we've actually got some good action going. I see uh, several several human units in action, including um, that large tank that looks like it's spewing artillery in the air, and, and it went just boom just now. But uh, tell us about some of these units and, and uh, what we can expect from them. Okay, well, that big tanky unit that was uh, spewing the green stuff, that's uh, what we call the Pudge, and it's actually a pretty fun unit. Uh, they require a bit of a setup time, but then after that, they just start spewing that green stuff uh, all over the place. And it does, uh, you know, a decent amount of damage. And the best thing about them is the corrosive. But what really makes them fun is that you can actually uh, put units into them and kind of fire out a pod and just, you know, fire your own units halfway across the map and surprise people. So it's really great, actually, one of the great units. It's like, I mean, they stay behind. And then yeah. you can put actually the, your bigger units and you surprise the enemy, you grab them right in the middle of the base. So, and it, it's, it's really fun to play with that unit actually. Right. Um, and what other units are we seeing right now? Uh, right now you're just seeing us, uh, the operative? Yeah, we've, um, I've actually, I think I saw an operative running around on screen, but operatives are uh, one of our assassin uh, type units. They go invisible. Yeah kind of do your typical sniper stuff, but then there are different, uh, you know, well, counters for them and uh, different ways they can play. You can choose not to go for the stealth build, you can go for higher damage, you can play like someone who's just going to mess with the, your opponent by, you know, affecting them with different statuses and then running away. 
um, for people who are playing against operatives, there are lo different ways you can always keep detecting them and then just ruining that for, you know, someone who wants to ruin the game for you. So we actually, you know, have different checks for different abilities and different builds. And most of it is uh, through our upgrade system, which is, uh, you know, something we wanted. We wanted, you know, the game to change according to, you know, what someone's building. Uh, not only via what unit, but also what upgrades they've taken. So just because you may have my counter, I can probably take an upgrade or two and turn that straight around without having to switch into a whole new unit. Right. Now, obviously, we're looking at humans right now, but there there are some... I mean, we're still looking at things that you may not necessarily expect from the human faction in another RTS. What are some of the more out-there units that are in play? Um, our Mad Rat? I, yeah, he's yeah, our Mad Rat. Uh, that's my favorite unit. Uh, he is supposed to be our mad scientist, and he he's fast. He's really squishy, doesn't really take much damage, but God, can he be annoying. Uh, he's got... <laughs> Uh, he's got uh, upgrades where he can uh, start uh, spewing out a toxic leak, which uh, you know damages people nearby him. He does a an overtime. He fires an acid cannon, which does overtime damage. So you know he can make that better. He can. Uh, he has the ability to kind of explode on death. So if you see he's getting low on health, just charge at your enemy. You bum rush them and kind of boom. Now, one thing I've noticed is that matches tend to be over maybe a little more quickly than I would expect in other RTSs, where there's perhaps a long, drawn-out process of collecting resources before you really get into the fray. Um, right. Are matches typically short interest? Uh, typically, yes, but we've had actually a few matches that have gone on longer. It depends on the map. Like, we're watching the 2v2 right now. Right. Those will be uh, shorter. There's uh, short distances to cover. You can uh, get to your uh, opponent's base easier. We've got a few larger maps uh, that, that have come out, and those will take, well, at least twice the time this would take. But we did want games to kind of be a little faster. We didn't want people to have to focus on resources and focus more on their units and just moving around the map. Because for us, that's where the fun is in this stuff. Now, for an RTS player that's just coming into Trist for the first time, um, it, you know how would you, how easy would you say it is to get a handle on on how everything works, how the resource gathering works, how the you know how the the hotkeys are set up, and so on. Um, not too difficult actually. I mean, especially if you start with the humans, you're in within five minutes. You you know it's all uh, set up for you. Uh, Zali will take a little bit longer. They'll probably take a match or two before you know you get the ins and outs. And after that, it's basically knowing or at least figuring out the different combinations you like. So we've actually had a lot of playtests where, you know, yeah, there's a moment of confusion like any game where you just go in and you're like, wait, and then, yeah, you're in. You get it. And now we see um, humans trying their best to infiltrate a, a Zali site here, but it looks like it might be unsuccessful depending on how this and, fight plays out. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you just saw the jump pack ability. Those are actually the titans. Uh... They've got uh, jump jets and they've got shotguns, which uh, will actually do more damage the closer they are to someone. He pretty much shot someone in the face right there. So yeah. <laughs> and I and I see that that unit sort of off to the the top um, that looks like a, a giant beetle hovering in the air with a shield around it. Yeah. That is uh, that's the harvester. It's 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 more of a support unit. Right. And if you uh, those uh, shiny little orbs um, on the ground, it harvests those, and it can actually recreate uh, dead Zali units yes. on the fly. So you can actually turn the enemy against uh, onto your side if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. You you can totally do that. Uh, you know, and as always, there are upgrades that help you do that better. Right. Now, on the Zali side of things, we've talked a lot about the human units. What are some of your favorite units um, on, on the alien side of things? Uh, let's see. Uh, I like the Pudge, and I am partial to exhaust brushes. I, there's just something I enjoy about it. It's probably just the cheesiness of it, but uh, they have an aerial unit which you get uh, after you build an altar of knowledge. And they're fast. They, you know, they're just fun. Yeah, you just get a bunch of them and then just, you know, fly around the map, make sure nobody can capture points, and then just annoy someone, really. <laughs> but let's... I seem to... I say that a lot. I, I enjoy annoying people for some reason. 
Well, let's say you're more of a more of a turtler. Do you still have all the options if you want to sort of hole up in your base and be very defensive? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, that would for the humans, you can definitely do that. With the Zali, you, you can do that. You can do it even better if you go for a particular path. Uh, preservation. They're you know very good at turtling actually. So you, there, the options are all there for uh, everyone, and you know if we ever find something that's lacking, we can always you know fix it. Have you ever considered throwing in, uh, for, for example, another faction into this? Right now we've got uh, we've got two factions. Was there ever a consideration of throwing in a third? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> definitely, definitely, we are thinking. We we talking about actually an additional DLC content, but the we were kind of going towards more towards another campaign yeah. that actually going for the uh, going for the third race. But we will see it you know, over the next few weeks, in a few days, maybe we will ask the community as well um, as it grows and as the game releases. And then depending on their interest, whether they would want um, another an, an, another episodic main yeah. campaign or actually they want actually another race. So we will make a choice based on what they want. Right. It's something, you know, we want to, you know, make sure we take the right decision with. So we're, we, we have ideas. We always have tons of ideas. We're just, you know, taking it slow with this. No, oh, understood. Um, so, I'm I'm curious too to uh, to know. So right now you're in closed beta. How many? If if you're in the closed beta right now, and we're actually on Gamespot giving away uh, closed beta keys to your game, um, how many maps um, is currently in the in the beta test? We have four maps. Yeah. Four maps. Four maps. Yeah. Yeah. We have the one you're currently watching. We have a three v three that's based in a swamp. Uh, a slightly industrial looking 4v4 and a whole another 4v4 that's more deserty. Right. And how many would we expect in the full game when it arrives? Um, we have uh, five, five maps. Five, five maps. Okay. Five. Plus we have we are working on two more maps that they will be coming in post release. Yeah. So right now, um, max players is 4v4. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. And speaking of which, I mean, we talked about the closed beta and, and that, you're, that you're coming soon. When is Trist actually going to be released um, fully? Uh, fully, it's September 14th. Um, we are looking at right now. So. Great, so very soon. <laughs> yes, um, yes, very soon. And you, you will be available on Steam um, as well as yes. what, other, what other digital outlets, perhaps? Um, we are currently talking to Gamerscape. Um, at the same time, Green Man Gaming um, and and which other and few other sites as we are discussing, but definitely will be on Gamerscape, um, Green Man Gaming, and uh, Steam. And Steam. Okay, great. And how much is the uh, the game going to be retailing for when it arrives? Um, it's actually the basic edition is going to be twenty four ninety nine. Okay. Um, and then we have a premium edition which comes all the new content that's going to be going to release actually in future. That's twenty nine ninety nine. And it looks like we've had pretty much a, a major victory there um, that, we're, that we saw on the screen. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, unfortunately, I missed it because I was rattling on about price points, um, but what was on the screen was actually much more interesting. Now, we've got... Um, what, what are these units that we see sort of, sort of trundling along towards victory? Um, titans. Those were titans, titans yeah. Those, titans. Are the okay. titans. those are the guys with the jetpacks and shotguns. Okay. After yes, them. they're going to make a jump right now. And um, the the giant airships you were seeing behind them, those were our Garudas, actually. Um, they only attack ground, but uh, they pack a punch and they have a nice spread. Your instructions. And I see that you're obviously building up for a for what looks to be a a, a final assault here. Yes. So I'm I'm anxious to see how this goes. And boom, there goes one one of them out of the sky already. You've got some ground troops prepared. For the uh, yes. the aerial assault, but oh, there yeah, goes the go. jump packs. Yes. Uh, you can't you can't go wrong with jump packs. Very true. Well, gentlemen, it looks like um, it looks like victory has has been uh, been received. So I want yes. to thank you again. Um, thank you, Vinny, Alok, and Tejas for uh, joining me, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing Trist uh, arrive on September fourteenth. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.